All right, Robbie, we missed you last show. So since you're the birthday boy, Robbie, is this a truth, lie, or is this shenanigan? Um, this is a very sad truth. Very sad truth on, well, maybe an industry that might be considered shenanigans. Um, Denmark is reporting that they are going to be calling the entire uh, commercial mink population in their country, 17 million animals amid um, coronavirus fears. Now, minks and humans do share a little bit of a history as far as trading viruses go. It is something that happens uh, between our two species. Um, but now this, what's happened with the COVID-19, there's now a mutation called SARS-CoV-2, and they're referring it to cluster five. I'm referring to it as a cluster five. It's just the, the new name that they've given it. Now, why this particular variant is so important to keep an eye on and why the call has been ordered is because the new COVID strain that's been passed back on to humans is showing that it is it has inhibitors to a lot of the covid fighting antibodies that we're currently using to develop vaccines that is terrifying in and of itself you're saying it's resistant the, to our current therapy it's not resistant it has it is building up some resistance to it which really impedes the effectiveness of the current vaccine lots that they are working on internationally so i guess my question for the panel is you know mink fur clothing mink oil false eyelashes are these two pro are these products that you could sacrifice for the benefit of both human and mink populations <laughs> lizzie did you want to start i was gonna say who are you asking first um i still have not purchased a mink yet um that is one so of the luxury plans. items oh yeah okay oh yeah one Mink, chinchilla, the whole nine. Um, but as it relates to this story, I, I had to do some research um, because, I, one, I didn't even know that there were 17 million mink in Denmark. Um, I've been to Denmark before. It's a very small country. Um, it is in Europe, in Scandinavia. It is to the north of Germany, and it is below um, Norway and Sweden. And only a population of 5.7 million people. It's a little less than twice the size of Massachusetts, just to give you a little background. So it's a very small country. So to think that there are 17 million mink in this small country is like, whoa, that's a lot. Um, but I wasn't sure what this was about originally. And then when they started to talk about the connection between um, some mink, not all 17 million are infected with COVID-19. It's some mink. They don't know the exact number, but to, um, you know, head off any type of mass um, infestation, if you will, with um, the Denmark population, they're deciding to get rid of all the mink. And I'm not quite sure if I'm there yet on that. I think that is um, an extreme, especially since you really don't know how many mink in the country are infected, what the general area is, like where are these mink? that are infected and how did they because there were some so from what i read there was an ammo infected first and then it got to humans and then it got to mink and then it got to human like it kept going back and forth right. um mm -hmm. and so is there not a way to contain this is you know instead of like killing all of them and what do you do with all 17 million mink bodies that like, you have destroyed probably where do they go Previously to the ma to this mass call that was announced um, in the weeks leading up, there had been already been a culling of some 500,000 minks in Denmark, and it's been reported that they're just mass graves in the countryside. Uh, typically, oh. with a with a healthy mink, then there's other products that you can get from it, um, just rendering the oil uh, or rendering the fat for mink oil, for example. Um, and what happens to a lot of the carcasses is they just kind of get ground down and their organic nitrate rich bodies get added to the fur and the feces and it's used as fertilizer. So there isn't a part of the animal that's wasted. But at the end of the day, this is an animal population that's being raised and maintained for the primary purpose of clothing or the fur. So Neo. 
So I'll say I, I was shocked. I was one. I was shocked by the number. Um, seventeen million. Yeah, I, I mean, I was shocked that we even that we even need seventeen million minks. But I guess there are a lot of people like Lizzie who like mink. <laughs> but I mean, my friend. It's cold in Scandinavia. Let, let, let's, you know, we need That's to acknowledge true, that. It, I mean, it, yeah, Scandinavia. It, it, is a, it is partially survival up there, partially. I mean, but there are, there are other, other things we can use nowadays. Um, but I was started wondering, the first thought that came to me is I started wondering, is this nature trying to get back at us uh, for all our atrocities, like, for example, furs and, and, and the things that we do in America? I mean, you think about the current pandemic started in like, Wuhan, China, and some wet market down there, right? And you know what they do with animals down there. And then we talk about these minks and, you know, the potential pandemic started because of people's affection for furs, you know, because this is a potential pandemic um, because it's a different strain, right? And so in some ways, I'm wondering, you know, and it's sad for me to say, but I'm wondering is if humanity as a whole has earned a pandemic. I'm not saying hmm. deserve, but earned it by no. trust. Okay. No, because the people, the people who would be the suggested earners, if you will, of this particular pandemic are not the people that are dying. At least look at the numbers in America. We are now at what, 260? I might be off a little bit, but 200. That's why I specified humanity as a whole. I just want to clarify. That's not how things work because it's not, if it's not affecting the actual people that are intended, then what's the point? The 260, 100,000 people in this country who have current, who have died so far um, of COVID-19 guarantee less than 1% of them own a mink. So yeah. you're not really going to the intended population if you want to say that this is a punishment, mm -hmm. if you will, or if this is supposed to be some type of deterrent or a wake up call. No, it, it doesn't really work like yeah, that. But nature, it, I don't know, nature sort of does work like that, though. Nature does I work know. like that. Nature, because it's survival, I mean, it's, it, it kind of, it's self correct. So, you know, yeah. and I'm, I'm speaking to humanity as a species, not as an, in, you know, not as individual. I'm speaking about humanity as a species. How is this self-correcting? The fact it's that self furs and minks, when you're not getting to the people who wear furs and minks. But this is self-correcting, Liz, in that we, there are too many humans on the planet. That's well documented. We consume too many resources. As a result, we engage in very unhealthy practices for the planet. So with these commercial farms and these animals that are in very tight captivity and the transfer of viruses back and forth between the two genuses, um, that is absolutely self-correcting because if there's too many monkeys on the planet doing too many bad things to the planet and to the other species, nature Mother Nature find finds a way. Yep. Mother but, Nature but, finds a correcting balance. We've been polluting at a high level. Are, but the people that are doing the bad things are not the mm -hmm. people You're thinking that individuals. Bad. See, you're thinking individuals. I'm speaking as a whole, as a species. But then mm -hmm. what's the point? Their innocence in the species. That's why I'm saying it's not a corrective measure. Nature it's doesn't not... look at the innocence as a, in, in the species. That's, that's why I call the nature explanation bullshit. And yes, give me some points for that. It's, <laughs> it's bullshit. Like, do I think do I think that this is a part of nature? That um, pandemics, that disease, are a part of nature? Absolutely. But then how can you eliminate it? Because there are certain as a consideration. Diseases, because there are certain diseases that have nothing to do with human activity. How, how does this? But this one specifically does. But then kill the people that are responsible for it. Like, but that's not it, how it, natural causes work. It just you, you can't. It doesn't. It, you would have to have a consciousness. It doesn't have a consciousness. It's bullshit. Not, not, no one is going to learn or be corrected by this. And so then what's the point? Yeah, but then humanity if as a whole has to stop their practices that cause these issues. 
But is humanity as a whole going to do that? It is not correcting anything. So then have then my what my comment was then we've earned a pandemic. If we won't stop doing these maybe things, you, we've earned it. You have earned. Maybe yes. you, you can take that on your shoulder. Humanity as a species it. has earned it. Well, I haven't taken responsibility for any of that. You're not. You're not humanity. You're not. You're not a species. And you're you're a part of the species, but I'm a part of it, so then it affects me. You're right? an individual in the species, but and it affects me, right? It does. I'm, unless you just like it affects see. 17 million minks, that entire species. Exactly. Well, that's different. That's Actually, it's not affecting seven. We are affecting the minks. That's true. Too. Seventeen million minks aren't infected at this moment. That's we don't even true. know how many are infected right now. That's true. Very true. All right, great, great conversation. <laughs> Very animated. Very animated. All right, let me get online real quick. Uh, so Jose says, uh, "Such a waste, those poor minks. So sad." Uh, Mike Winter says, "All them coats," and he's crying. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Mike Winters in Lizzie's uh, corner. Uh, Paulette says, it sure is opening our eyes or should be. Jacqueline Robinson says, this pandemic, if anything, has exposed inequities in our healthcare system as well as our economy. And uh, Paulette, Paulette, Paulette also says, two wrongs don't make a right. And Michael Wolf just commented. Oh, go ahead, Lizzie, you about to say something? I was just going to ask, though, in terms of exposing, like, how much is it really exposed? Just specifically to this issue, and I think Rob B is frozen, I but so specifically too. to this issue because Let me if check not, on. if not for this topic from Rob B, I never would have heard of this. That's true. I never like this is some information that Rob B is, you know, schooling me on as it relates to one, the size of the mink population in um, Denmark Two, about the how easily it's transferred between this species of mink versus humans and three, how they are responding. I had never heard this story, this topic before Rob B brought it to the table. And I the mink industry has been oh, good. Harvey? The mink industry has been under attack for several years because of issues like this, because of the transfer of pathogens between our two species. Um, and we can produce these goods artificially. You don't need fake mink eyelashes. No. You don't need a mink well, coat. You don't need eyelashes. mink oil. <laughs> I, I got but, good eyelashes. I never get mink eyelashes. But um, that's one of those bullsh products that's generated from an innocent animal. It's to me, it's an industry that's based on vanity, initially out of necessity when we were when we needed to, the fur trade in order to stay warm. But we can artificially reproduce this. We have the comforts, we have the technology, and these poor animals in dozens of countries are mass farmed and suffer and die for some pretty hats and boots and coats. So Mike Wolf made an excellent point. He just I just want to get this in. So he kind of uh, clarified with the point I was making. He said it's similar to global warming. The people who live in Oceanside trailer parks are getting killed by hurricanes, not the oil executives creating the global warming. It doesn't, nature doesn't pick and choose. It just is what it is. Mm -hmm. we, we've point. earned hurricanes because of the oil executives. I've earned no yes. damn hurricane. Um, but if, if, if you go back to, if you go back to um, the point that Rob B just made, I mean, you can easily assign that to old girl in our quick fire. Um, I mean, you know, there are a lot of cows that are dying for, you know, ribeye. I agree, and, it's true. That's true. For her to be able to put it in that poster. So it doesn't just apply to these poor mink. It applies oh. to all animals. Mm -hmm. Whether you are um, a, a vegan or a vegetarian or a pesca or a carnivore, yep. it all goes. Right. It's all, all around, all around. Agree. Agree. Agreed on that. All right. So next hot topic.